Dr. Davin Lim, board certified laser dermatologist. Today we'll be doing some product reviews. Today we'll be talking about Obagi, but in particular their retinol or retinoid uh, range of skincare. So as you remember, vitamin A is, I guess, one of the building blocks for your skin. So apart from sunscreen, we all preach the ABCs, which are the vitamin A, the vitamin Bs, and the ascorbic acid, vitamin C of skincare. The most important one I feel is actually, apart from sunscreen, is to use a good vitamin A. Why is that so? Because vitamin A, such as retinol or retinoid, can actually help with many aspects of skin, including acne, acne prone skin, pores, improving collagen, decreasing pigmentation such as melasma, and helping with sun damage. So vitamin A is a very, very flexible vitamin for your skin. Now, what you need to understand is that uh, retinoids such as um, a retinol needs to be converted to retinoic acid before being active. So it is very important to understand as well is that this conversion is different for everyone, right? So if I can give a ballpark figure, it's anywhere between one to about three to four percent of a retinol being converted to the active form retinoic acid. This is in comparison to prescribed medications such as tazarotene, which is the third generation retinoid, to adapalene, which I understand you can buy over the counter in the US, which is a second generation retinoid, all the way to tretinoin, which is the first generation. So remember, you do need conversion and it is very important because everyone converts differently. So how to use a retinoid? A retinoid should be used, if possible, every day. Some patients, for example, me, I've got sensitive skin, I can only use medically graded retinoids for two to three days out of the week. Any more and I'll get redness, peeling, itchiness and flaking. Try to push it, but don't push it to that level. And remember, everyone's different. So in order how to use vitamin A's, I've done a specific video on this. Today's video is more about the product review. I don't usually do product reviews, but I do think it's very important because it helps the consumers, including the viewers, understand what the cost benefit ratio of a cream is. So let's start off with Abaji. So Abaji, as you know, has been with us for many, many years. And the reason why I've cho chosen Abaji to actually review is that this is actually endorsed and basically recommended by most dermatologists. Uh, it's considered, I guess, as high as one can go before actually going to the prescription. So many of my patients, I actually start them on Abaji before starting on medically prescribed retinoids. So let's go through the categories of um, Abaji. Abaji comes in a retinol 0.5 and a retinol 1.0. So it comes as a cream, which is cosmetically elegant to use. So in this rating, I'm gonna do six different things to actually get you to decide whether this is right for you or not. Okay, first of all, we talk about the skin science. Now, skin science is actually very solid for retinoids. Um, in fact, most of the studies were done in the 80s and 90s, and it's very solid in the sense that it has shown to be medically effective uh, because all the studies have shown an increase in the amount of collagen, a decrease in pigmentation, and even improvement in acne. So if I were to rate this from a skin science point of view, the logic, the theory is there, so it's five out of five for a budgie. The second category is ease of use. Now, retinoids are a little bit trickier to, trickier to use compared to, let's say, a sunscreen or a day cream or night cream because there are patients out there uh, who have, let's say, rosacea, seb dermatitis, and basically eczema could have sensitive skin. So you do have to use it with caution, and the ease of use is there, providing you can follow, I guess, what your skin's telling you. So when I mean ease of use, for example, you could use this every day or every night uh, if you don't have, uh, I guess, sensitive skin. But if you do, it doesn't mean you can't use it. All you have to do is titrate the use. So try a small test patch around your front of your ear before applying it around your eye area because your eye area is the thinnest skin in your body. So titrate the use. If you do get any redness, burning, stinging, irritation, or flaking, what you could do, mix that with a bit of moisturizer. So I've given it a three out of five for the ease of use. The third category is compatibility, which means can you mix this with other creams? Um, for this category, I've given it out of three out of five, and I'll tell you why. It's because vitamin A is compatible with other skin actives, such as your B, such as you know, niacinamide, vitamin C, ascorbic acid, 
alpha hydroxy acids, um, lactic acid, and even in some cases medically prescribed hydroquinone. But the compatibility is certainly not perfect. That's why I've been given a three. And what so what I mean is this. Patients who have that sensitive skin or if you're using other active cosmeceuticals, like I illustrated, such as the vitamin C, especially with the ascorbic acid, you can get some irritation. So the ease of use is there. However, you've got to listen to what your skin's telling you and titrate it and all your other prescription medications as well, or prescription creams, according to, to you. Okay, so I've given it a three out of five for compatibility. Okay, guys. The fourth category is subjective feel, and this is the one that's going to vary the most. Um, so basically how I feel, how I rate this in regards to ease of use, but not only that, how it feels on my skin. So remember, it's my skin, that's why it says subjective compatibility. I find this really nice, yeah? I've given it a four out of five. The reason being is that when you apply this cream on your face, it actually blends in very nice. Um, and the other thing as well, it doesn't smell. So, you know, and that's good because we don't want fragrances for our active cosmetics or skincare. Subjectively, I think Obagi has actually nailed it on the head with when it comes to the feel of it. It's nice, it goes in really well, um, and it doesn't smell. So four out of five, good on you, Obagi. Now, the fifth category, once again, it's, that's why I put it quite low, is packaging, right? So if you look at this, it's actually a no-fuss packaging. It's, um, it's cardboard box, and um, this is what you have with a little tube. So when it comes to packaging, look, realistically, I've given them a three out of five. In my opinion, packaging is only a very small aspect of skincare, but as you know, you know, you can buy products which actually have elegant packaging, but you are paying more. So packaging, three out of five. Guys, now the sixth category, which I would like to actually share with you is the price, yeah? So, there are retinoids out there, for example, like um, The Ordinary, yeah, that make really cheap retinoids. So in this situation, if I was reviewing, um, I guess, The Ordinary, they'll be five out of five. For Abaji, I've given this a, a two out of five, yeah? The reason being is that it is up there when it comes to expense and, um, and I guess, the pricing of a, um, of a retinoid. So two out of five, um, it's not the most expensive retinol you can buy, but certainly it will be the top, probably, 10 to 20% when it comes to expense. You're probably looking anywhere between mid 45s all the way to $65 if you buy this um, online or even in your doctor or dermatologist. So it does add up uh, compared to something like a, um, a retinol or retinoid from uh, The Ordinary. So guys, I hope that gives you an indication because uh, when you count everything out, the six categories, I've given this a 21 out of 30. So that's what we call the DAV score, yeah? Bitcoin is like the Doug score if you ever watch um, cars, car reviews. So the DAV score is 21 out of 30 for Abaji. Guys, I hope you find that useful. This is my first time I've ever done specific product reviews. Most of my reviews in the past have been how to use, for example, um, a retinoid or a retinol um, and active with skincare, but today is the first time I've actually reviewed, I guess, um, and given a score to an active ingredient by a well-known cosmetic company. Guys, I hope you liked that video. More to come. Uh, if you're new to this channel, please consider uh, chiming your thoughts below, liking it, sharing it, and by all means, subscribe. I'll see you same place, same time next week. Bye for now.